natural resources, minerals, energy, plants and wildlife. The economic development of a country largely depends upon its capacity to use and convert its natural resources into useful goods. Minerals and power resources are important natural resources which provide the basis for industrial development of a country. The natural growth of all types of plant life is termed as natural vegetation. The vegetation of different parts of the world is affected by the amount of sunlight and the amount of rainfall. Study at a glance Mineral resources, energy resources, plant and wildlife resources, forest types and wildlife resources. Mineral Resources In our own surroundings, we can find many mineral products like utensil, nails, wires, machines, jewellery and television. All these have been made of some kind of mineral. What are minerals? Minerals are the natural substances having definite chemical composition and physical properties. Color and hardness are examples of physical properties like coal is black or brown, quartz may be red, black, pink or purple. Similarly, a mineral may be as soft as a talc and can be as hard as a diamond. Solubility is a chemical property of minerals. Example, salt is soluble while quartz is insoluble. Classification of minerals. Here, we will study the classification of minerals based on its physical and chemical characteristics use and origin. They are metallic and non-metallic minerals. Metallic minerals. Metallic minerals are those minerals which have metals. Example, iron ore, cobalt, chromite, gold, silver, etc. Non-metallic minerals. Non-metallic minerals are those minerals which do not have metals. Example, limestone, nitrate, potash, dolomite, mica, gypsum, coal, petroleum, etc. Now, we will study metallic and non-metallic minerals in detail by examining its differences. Metallic minerals have luster. Non-metallic minerals are dull in luster. Metallic minerals are mostly associated with igneous and metamorphic rocks. Example, iron ore, copper, zinc, bauxite, lead, silver, gold, etc. Non-metallic minerals are mostly associated with sedimentary or metamorphic rocks. Example, granite, coal, sulphur, petroleum, salt, etc. Metallic minerals are ductile. Non-metallic minerals are not ductile. Thin wires can be drawn out of metallic minerals. Wires cannot be drawn out of non-metallic minerals. They break into pieces if any hard substance is struck against them. Metallic minerals are generally solid and heavy. Non-metallic minerals are neither 
solid nor heavy. Some of them are found in the liquid as well as gaseous state also. Do you know metallic minerals can be subdivided into two categories? Ferrous and non-ferrous minerals. Ferrous minerals are iron-based minerals. Example, iron ore, manganese ore, chronite, physite, tungsten, nickel, cobalt. Non-ferrous minerals contain metals other than iron. Example, gold, silver, copper, lead, bauxite, tin. What is an ore? An ore is the natural accumulation of metals or valuable minerals in a concentrated form along with several impurities. Example, aluminium is a metal which is derived from its ore, bauxite. Metals are obtained in their pure form after separating them from their ores. The process of separating of minerals from their ores by the use of heat is called smelting. How are the minerals dug out from the earth's surface? Through the process of mining, minerals are extracted from the earth's surface. In other words, extracting commercially valuable minerals from the earth is called mining. A mine is an excavation in the ground for digging out minerals. It may be a deep underground mine or close to the surface. Surface mine or open pit mines are generally called a quarry. Usefulness of a metal is sometimes enhanced by combining it with other metals. This new material is called an alloy. Copper is made stronger by adding tin and this alloy is called bronze. Similarly, iron is mixed with different metals such as manganese, nickel and chromium to prepare different alloys. Distribution of minerals. Do you know where these minerals are found? Minerals are found on the earth's surface which is closely associated with the type of rocks and the underlying structure of a region. Many important minerals are found as ores in the form of narrow veins in igneous or metamorphic rocks like gold, silver, etc. Certain minerals like gold and diamond may occur as alluvial deposits in the sands and gravels of river beds. Weathered and eroded rock particles containing the minerals are removed and carried by rivers which get deposited in the river beds. These are called placer deposits. Important minerals and their distribution. Do you know which are the important minerals used in a large number of industries? Iron ore, copper and bauxite are used in a large number of industries. Iron. It is the most widely used metal. It is taken as the symbol of modern civilization. It is used for making machine tools, machines, various means of transport, etc. There are different types of iron ores. Example, hematite and magnetite. Location, World, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, USA, China, India, 
Brazil, France, Germany, South Africa, etc. In India, Jharkhand, Orissa, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. Copper. It is used largely in electrical industries because of its quality of electrical conductivity. Location. World. Chile. USA, Canada, Poland, Russia, Georgia, Armenia, Congo and Zambia. In India, Jharkhand and Rajasthan. Bauxite. It is an ore from which aluminium is extracted. It is used for making aeroplanes, machine tools, utensils, Packaging, construction and electrical materials. Location, World, Australia, Guinea, Jamaica and Brazil. Recycling means using discarded materials once again. Metals like aluminium can be recycled easily. Example, recycling of discarded Aluminium beverage cans by reprocessing into new aluminium products. Extraction of minerals. Minerals can be extracted by mining, drilling or quarrying. The process of taking out minerals from rocks buried under the earth's surface is called mining. Minerals that lie at shallow depths are taken out by removing the surface layer. This is known as open cast mining. Deep bores called shafts have to be made to reach mineral deposits that lie at great depths. This is called shaft mining. Petroleum and natural gas occur far below the earth's surface. Deep wells are bored to take them out. This is called drilling. Minerals that lie near the surface are simply dug out by the process known as quarrying. Uses of Minerals Minerals are used in many industries. Minerals which are used for gems are usually hard. These are then set in various styles for jewellery. Copper is another metal used in everything from coins to pipes. Silicon used in the computer industry is obtained from quartz. Aluminium obtained from its ore bauxite is used in automobiles and airplanes, bottling industry, buildings and even in kitchen cookware. Conservation of Minerals Minerals are a non-renewable resource. It takes thousands of years for the formation and concentration of minerals. The rate of formation is much smaller than the rate at which the humans consume these minerals. It is necessary to reduce wastage in the process of mining. Recycling of metals is another way in which the mineral resources can be conserved. Plant and Wildlife Resources Do you know which are the spheres of the earth? Lithosphere, Hydrosphere, Atmosphere and Biosphere. Among these spheres, Biosphere is the narrow sphere where life exists. A variety of organisms exist in a thin zone of contact between Lithosphere, Hydrosphere and the Atmosphere called Biosphere. These organisms of the biosphere are broadly divided into plants, animals and microbes. How does plant resource become the backbone of our natural resources? Plant kingdom obtains energy from the sun. It provides energy to animal kingdom in the form of food. Thus, plant kingdom in other words, the flora became the backbone of our natural resources. Plant resources 
provided stage for the appearance of another kind of life in the form of animals leading to the evolution of animal kingdom plants flora and animals fauna are complementary to each other without considering one the existence of another is meaningless energy resources energy is the capacity to do work do you know how we can obtain energy we can obtain energy in three basic ways one direct heating such as by fire the sun and natural hot spring two electricity which is produced from more direct sources such as by burning fossil fuels and three stored energy in the form of a battery which are the sources through which electricity is produced electricity is produced from large power plants thermal or heat plants burn coal or natural gas nuclear plants use nuclear fuel such as uranium thorium etc hydroelectric power plants use the force of falling water besides these large power plants there are smaller power plants using geothermal sources solar sources and wind source do you know how electricity is transmitted to far off places electricity thus produced is transmitted through a network of power lines called a grid to far off places and reaches houses shops and factories sources of energy resources what is the difference between conventional and non conventional sources of energy conventional sources of energy they have been in use from time immemorial they except water are exhaustible they cause pollution when used as they emit smoke and ash power generated from these resources is very expensive to be maintained stored and transmitted as it is carried over large distances through transmission grid and lines examples coal mineral oil natural gas atomic minerals water etc non conventional sources of energy they have been identified in the recent past they are inexhaustible they do not cause pollution small amount of finance is required for the use in generation of power examples geothermal energy solar energy wind energy and energy from urban wastes biomass electricity do you know from where we get electricity we all get electricity through different sources in india electricity comes from three sources water mineral fuels and atomic minerals apart from these sources there are alternative sources of energy they are geothermal wind energy solar energy nuclear energy and tidal energy now we will study these sources of energy in detail hydroelectricity hydroelectricity is obtained by running water which drives turbines the force of falling water which is used for generating electricity is called hydroelectricity major hydel power projects commonly known as river valley or multi power projects in the world are located 
in the countries like Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, Canada and the USA. Major river valley projects in India are Bhakra Nangal, Damodar Valley Corporation which produce hydroelectricity. Solar energy. Sun is the most inexhaustible and abundant source of energy in the world. Energy received upon the earth from the sun is termed as solar energy. Now we can list out some uses of solar energy in India. India being a tropical country has been able to use solar energy in cooking, water heating, water desalination, space heating and crop drying. How is electricity generated through sunlight? Solar energy can be trapped using solar collectors which can heat water. Photovoltaic cells convert sunlight directly into electricity. The largest solar power plant of India is located at Madhapur near Bhuj in Gujarat. Solar plants are located in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and Kerala. Wind energy Wind power is used in pumping water, moving windmills, irrigating farms and generating electricity. The largest wind power farm cluster is located from Nagar Koil to Madurai in Tamil Nadu. Other states like Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Gujarat, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Lakshadweep are better placed from the point of view of wind energy. In the world, the wind power plants are located in Netherlands in Europe, the coastal region of northeastern USA and Southern California. Nuclear Power Nuclear power is obtained from energy stored in the nuclei of atoms of naturally occurring radioactive elements like uranium and thorium. These fuels undergo nuclear fission in nuclear reactors and emit power. The greatest producers of nuclear power are USA and Europe. The nuclear power stations in India are located in Kalpagam in Tamil Nadu, Tarapur in Maharashtra, Rana Pratap Sagar near Kota in Rajasthan, Narora in Uttar Pradesh and Kaiga in Karnataka. Geothermal Energy Now let us understand how geothermal energy is produced. Heat from the interior of the earth is used to produce geothermal energy. Earth grows progressively hotter with increase in depth. With high geothermal gradient, high temperatures are found at shallow depths. Groundwater gets hot with the contact of hot rocks. It is so hot that when it rises, it is in the form of steam. This steam is used to turn turbines to produce energy. Two projects have been set up in India on an experimental basis for generating geothermal energy. One in Parvati Valley near Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh. Another plant in Puga Valley, Ladakh. Natural internal heat is now being used to generate electricity in Russia, Japan, New Zealand, Iceland, Mexico and Hawaii and California in the USA. Tidal energy. Energy generated from tides is called tidal energy. Tidal energy can be harnessed by building dams at narrow openings of the sea. During high tide, the energy of the tides is used 
to turn the turbine installed in the dam to produce electricity. Biogas, organic waste such as dead plant and animal material, animal dung and kitchen waste can be converted into a gaseous fuel called biogas. The organic waste is decomposed by bacteria in biogas digesters to emit biogas, which is essentially a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide. Biogas is an excellent fuel for cooking and lighting and produces huge amount of organic manure each year. Plant and Wildlife Resources Do you know which are the spheres of the earth? Lithosphere, Hydrosphere, Atmosphere and Biosphere. Among these spheres, Biosphere is the narrow sphere where life exists. A variety of organisms exist in a thin zone of contact between lithosphere, hydrosphere and the atmosphere called biosphere. These organisms of the biosphere are broadly divided into plants, animals and microbes. How does plant resource become the backbone of our natural resources? Plant kingdom obtains energy from the sun. It provides energy to animal kingdom in the form of food. Thus, plant kingdom, in other words the flora, became the backbone of our natural resources. Plant resources provided stage for the appearance of another kind of life in the form of animals leading to the evolution of animal kingdom. Plants, flora and animals, fauna are complementary to each other. Without considering one, the existence of another is meaningless. Factors influencing plants and wildlife resources. What can be the factors that influence plants and wildlife resources? The physical environment influences the type of organisms living in an area. For example, plants and animals found on land and in water are totally different. Similarly, climatic conditions also bring about variations in the types of plants and animals found in different regions. Plants are rooted to the soil and hence they cannot move. They make physiological adjustments to seasonal changes. When compared to plants, animals are able to move from place to place. So, they stand better chance of survival. Annual migration of birds and animals is a common feature in many parts of the world. Birds fly thousands of kilometers to escape the freezing cold during winter. They go back to their homes before the beginning of summer. It is understood that climate is the most important factor that influences plant and animal resources. Forest types Forests make the bulk of our natural vegetation. Forests are found from the equator to the areas beyond 60 degrees north and south. But the types of trees found in these forests vary depending upon the range of temperature. Forests are classified broadly into evergreen and deciduous forests. Evergreen forests. Trees in these forests do not shed their leaves simultaneously during any season of the year. Evergreen forests may also be grouped into 
tropical evergreen forests, mid-latitude evergreen forests, Mediterranean and coniferous forests. Tropical evergreen forests. Let us cite some important features of tropical evergreen forests. These forests are found in the areas of heavy rainfall and abundant sunshine. Hot and humid conditions favor luxuriant growth of a variety of vegetation. Trees have broad leaves to permit transpiration of surplus moisture. These forests consist of hardwood species and are evergreen. Important species are bamboo, cinchona, rubber, ebony, mahogany, sandalwood and rosewood. Tropical evergreen forests are available in Amazon Basin, Zaire Basin, Malaysia, Myanmar, Kampuchea, Vietnam, Indonesia and New Guinea. Mid-Latitude Evergreen Forests These forests are found on the eastern margins of continents. These forests contain hardwood trees with broad leaves. Oak, eucalyptus and wattle are some economically important trees of these forests. South China, Southeastern USA, South Brazil, East Coast of South Africa and Southeastern Australia have such forests. Mediterranean Forests this type of vegetation is found largely in the areas around the Mediterranean Sea, like Italy, Spain, South France, Greece, California and Southern Africa. Trees are adapted to seasonal changes in temperature. They withstand the dry summer without shedding their leaves. Plants therefore have spiny, waxy and small leaves to reduce transpiration. Plants largely grow in winter and they have to be protected from the severity of heat during summer. Trees are not thick and have broad leaves. They are of medium height. Important species are olive, oak, Figs, pine, fir, cedar, oranges, grapes and lemon, etc. Coniferous forests. These forests extend as a continuous belt around the North Polar region and high mountains in Europe, Asia and North America. Due to low rainfall and severe cold winters, growth of plant life is very slow. The trees are evergreen with small needle-like leaves to reduce transpiration and to protect themselves from cold winter. The trees have soft wood. These softwood trees are pine, cedar and fir. Deciduous forests. Deciduous forests are those in which trees shed their leaves in a particular season in order to conserve loss of moisture through transpiration. Tropical deciduous. Let us understand some important features of tropical deciduous forest. These forests are found in subtropical regions with a distinct dry season. Trees shed their leaves during summer. These forests are comparatively less dense than tropical evergreen forests. Teak, Sal, Shisham, Neem 
and mango trees are the main species of trees grown here. Monsoon Asia, parts of Central America, Brazil and Northern Australia have such forests. Mid-latitude deciduous. These forests occur in the coastal temperate regions. Western Europe, Northeastern China, Japan, Northeastern USA, New Zealand and Southern Chile have such forests. Trees shed their leaves in winter to protect themselves from cold because during winter temperature in these areas falls below 6 degrees Celsius. Birch, ash and oak are some of the important trees of these forests. Uses of forests Forest resources can be used for different purposes. Commercial utilization of temperate evergreen and coniferous forests is very high. Norway, Sweden, Finland and Canada are important exporters of several forest products such as paper, wood pulp and newsprint. In India and other monsoon countries of South and Southeast Asia, rosewood, sandalwood, teak and mahogany are the important species which have been used economically to a large extent. Forests protect animals from wind, rain, storms, cold, heat and also prevents soil erosion. They provide fruits, food products, wood, timber and industrial products. Wildlife Resources Animals, birds and other organisms which live in a natural habitat are termed as wildlife. All the living organisms in the biosphere are interdependent and they are a part of the food chain. Conservation of Wildlife Why does wildlife need to be conserved? Wildlife plays an important role in an ecosystem and the substance of life on the earth. Many species of animals and plants have great use to man. Besides, they maintain the ecological balance. Hence, it is necessary to conserve the wildlife. There are different steps for conservation of wildlife. They are Establishment of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Legal protection of wildlife and endangered species. Each and every attempt should be made to conserve the endangered species. Threatened species should be restored by providing suitable environmental conditions and increasing reproductive capacity of those species. Habitats should be safeguarded. Conservation of forests. Why is it important to conserve forests? Forests play a very important role in the life and economy of a nation. The increasing destruction and degradation of forest areas lead to heavy erosion of the topsoil erratic rainfall and reoccurring floods. Due to these reasons, it is important to conserve forests. Now, let us list some important measures for conservation of forests. Diversion of forest lands for other purposes have to be prevented. Reckless cutting of forests needs to be checked. Steps have to be taken 
to stop shifting practice of cultivation. Forest fire is another cause of forest depletion which needs to be controlled effectively. Afforestation has to be taken up effectively. Fossil fuels. Why are coal, mineral oil and natural gas called fossil fuels? Because of their organic origin, these are called fossil fuels. They are produced from plant and animal materials and are forms of stored solar energy. How are fossils formed? Fossils are formed by the decomposition of marine creatures, minute plants and animals, buried and sedimented for millions of years. Here we will study how large deposits of oil and gas are formed. Under the presence of overlying rocks, the oil and gas are squeezed out of the source rocks. They move up through available spaces. However, if they are trapped beneath a layer of impermeable rock, oil or gas deposits are formed. The rocks that contain large deposits of oil and gas are called reservoir rocks. There is a possibility that the alternative sources of energy might replace fossil fuels in future. The alternative sources of energy are hydropower, geothermal, nuclear, solar and wind power. Distribution of fossil fuels We can list out some widely used fossil fuels. Coal mineral oil, natural gas, petrol, kerosene, etc. Coal Coal, which is a conventional source of energy, is found as one of the layers or seams in the sedimentary rocks. The thickness of the coal seams depends upon the nature of the plant cover. The quality of coal depends upon the depth, pressure and heat which the buried plant cover was subjected to. The coal which we are using today is formed millions of years ago when giant ferns and swamps got buried under the layers of earth. Coal is therefore referred to as buried sunshine. Coal is of four types. They are anthracite, which contains more than 80% carbon. Bituminous contains 60 to 80% carbon. Lignite contains 50 to 60% of carbon contents. Peat contains less than 50% of carbon. Coal, world distribution. Russia, USA, China, Australia, parts of Western Europe, South Africa and India. In India, Gondwana coal deposits located in Damodar Valley, Jharkhand and West Bengal. Important coal fields are Jharia, Rani Ganj, Bokaro. Other coal fields are Godavari, Mahanadi, Sam, and Vardha valleys. Tertiary coal deposits are located in northeastern states Meghalaya, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, and Nagaland. Mineral oil world distribution. Saudi Arabia, Russia, Venezuela, Mexico, Libya, Nigeria, UK, Norway, Denmark, 
Germany and the Netherlands. India, Assam, Tigboy, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Gulf of Khambat and in the Arabian Sea of Maharashtra coast. Natural gas. Natural gas is found with petroleum deposits and is released when crude oil is brought to the surface. It can be used as a domestic and industrial fuel. Russia, Norway, UK and the Netherlands are the major producers of natural gas. Compressed natural gas, CNG, is a popular, eco-friendly automobile fuel as it causes less pollution than petroleum and diesel. Petroleum Petroleum is found between the layers of rocks and is drilled from oil fields located in offshore and coastal areas. This is then sent to refineries which process the crude oil and produce a variety of products like diesel, petrol, kerosene, wax, plastics and lubricants. Petroleum and its derivatives are called black gold as they are very valuable. Summary Minerals and power resources provide the basis for industrial development. Minerals are of two types, metallic and non-metallic. Some important metallic minerals are iron, copper, bauxite, manganese, gold, uranium, thorium, etc. The non-metallic resources are coal, petroleum, natural gas, etc. Some non-conventional resources of energy are solar, wind, tidal and geothermal energy and some conventional sources of energy are coal, mineral oil, natural gas, atomic minerals, water, etc. India is rich in minerals and power resources. Minerals and power resources play a dominant role in our lives and these resources take a very long time to be renewed. So, we should use these resources judiciously keeping the future generations in mind. The natural growth of plant life is natural vegetation. The amount of sunlight and rainfall received affects the growth of plant life. There are different types of natural vegetation in the world. The natural vegetation and forest cover needs to be protected. Animals, birds and the organisms living in a natural habitat are termed as wildlife. Cutting down of forest area has created risk to wildlife. If this is not checked, wildlife may decrease or may even perish.